Uh, who thinks uh, that it's hot here in this room? There can't be only that much people. When I think of hot rooms, I always think of uh, the boiler room in Puckle Pop. Uh, this is uh, the boiler room in Puckle Pop, which is a very well-known Belgian uh, conference. A conference of uh, music lovers. It's actually one of the best uh, music festivals in Europe. And uh, just to uh, connect with the atmosphere of the boiler room, and since it's so hot in here anyway, let me show you uh, what happens in the boiler room. It's hot in there as well, so I hope at the end of uh, my presentation... <laughs> you'll be as happy with Lily as I am, thank you. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Steven Ulls, I'm from Autotot. I, I hope that the video is not too distracting. Uh, no, I'll finish the video anyway. <laughs> Let's get back to the uh, presentation. Um, I'm going to talk a bit business, I'm going to talk a bit technical, and I hope to be able to finish in time with a demo. So there's a bit of everything uh, for everybody of you. Uh, let's start with the pain. Uh, well, let's first start with introducing myself and my company. I'm uh, Stephen Knowles. I work with uh, Outer Thought. Uh, we're working on scalable content applications, and we've been working on Lily uh, for uh, quite a while now. And um, this is more like, a, well, this is Lily, uh, the reason why Lily exists, and uh, some stuff which is on the roadmap for uh, the next, next few months to come. Uh, but uh, let's first, first start with uh, the beginning of my story and the realization of the pain we are currently in. I guess everybody of you knows uh, the law of Moore, which tells us that there will be ever-increasing computing capacity uh, because the density of course uh, always gets higher uh, but then you have another law and that's the law of the increase of data in the world uh, there's just so much data in the world and we believe that uh, this gap which fits between these two power laws uh, allows us to think about even content repositories and any kind of application in the future uh, will have a requirement uh, concerning uh, a distributed architecture. So all of you who are currently developing uh, web applications or business applications with the classic stack of a relational database, some application engine, PHP, Java, whatever, and a web browser uh, will soon experience the pain in distributing the system out to a multiple core, multiple server uh, system. Um, and that, uh, well, uh, presents a number of pains. Uh, none the least, uh, obviously, uh, the storage that you need. So there's a huge amount of data uh, which is uh, approaching us. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you also see that a lot of competition, uh, business competition, is currently happening uh, because of uh, smart companies uh, applying analytics uh, to whatever they are doing. Uh, measuring anything. I saw already a lot of presentations about search analytics, about uh, log analytics uh, during the conference, and there will be more to come. Uh, so it's clear that uh, measuring what is happening in your infrastructure, measuring what is happening in your application, is what becoming a key uh, competi competitive aspect uh, to any organization out there. Uh, another thing which is happening as well is that uh, we're all doing business online at the moment. Uh, which means that uh, we don't have like office hours. Everything needs to be up and running always, and everything needs to be producing results uh, in a reasonable amount of time, uh, if not possible in uh, real time. On the other hand, um, as a small business owner, I know how hard it is to attract uh, good and great developers. Uh, we're all acutely aware of the fact that building distributed systems and building distributed architectures is really hard. It's what separates the boys from the men, uh, managing this stuff, and the, the girls from the women, of course. Uh, managing this stuff, building this stuff out so that it scales well, that it has predictable behavior, is, is really, really hard. So you might have 
enough capacity in terms of general web application engineering and, and database admin guys and that kind of stuff. But finding talent for distributed systems engineering is pretty hard. So uh, re we realized that and a uh, little more than, uh, well, I think a little less than two years ago, uh, we started thinking about Lily. And uh, the idea of Lily was uh, to make all of this new technology, Hadoop, HPACE, Solar, Search, architectures and all that, accessible to the normal, casual enterprise developer out there who isn't in the business for building the, new, the next new Twitter, who isn't uh, building uh, some stumble upon, uh, who isn't uh, building infrastructure level software, which is trying, but who is trying to solve a business problem is trying to solve, to use big data technology basically uh, as a foundation for his uh, business uh, enterprise architecture. So we call Lily the real-time platform built for the age of data. And the idea is that we're going, well, we're managing, we're going to track and measure all the data you have and that you're collecting in your organization, but also the user behavior around it and to try and match what is happening on the data side and what is happening on the user side with each other and to derive uh, recommendations and business, general business uh, intelligence uh, around that. So, uh, looking at typical uh, areas of, of use of Lily, uh, I think there's two big, well, there's, there's two big, no, there's four big, there's two big <laughs> uh, constituents uh, which you have to uh, be aware of. It's built for large collections of data, which will be used by large collections of users. Yeah? Uh, which means, on one hand, it will be, uh, you can use it for building content repository applications, uh, you can use it uh, to build uh, back-end system for libraries, public libraries. You can use it for asset management, uh, for catalogs, product catalogs in a retail environment, for instance, or to do a live archiving in the sense that you're not storing your information in a static file system, Hadoop, for instance, yeah? but you're going to store your information in a live database environment, so which scales well with the amount of data that you have, uh, but that data also remains accessible for simple create, read, update, and delete operations. So it's, in, a, in all uh, matters, it's, it's basically a simple uh, database. It's a data repository with uh, an API which uh, should connect well to the, uh, the uh, uh, the requirements of uh, an enterprise architect or, or developer. Looking at uh, the other side of the equation, uh, Lily will be ideally be used for people uh, who uh, attract large groups of users. Uh, so that could be either e-commerce, that could be news and media. Um, and ideally, and that's the, I think one of the more important parts is what I said already, uh, uh, you're going to use Lily if you want to use big data, and I think a lot of as people in this room want to use big data or playing around with it or investigating, exploring available techno technology, but they uh, require some predictability. They, want, they require some like, easiness of, uh, of use. Now, um, where we ended up uh, making the choice is basically uh, we took HBase. Uh, we took Apache Solar, well, both are Apache projects, uh, uh, obviously, uh, and we put some magic glue in between both. Uh, we uh, build an API on top of that, we package and wrap that and make that all easy to use uh, for you. So uh, these are the two core building blocks of, of Lily, uh, HBase and Solar. Now, the uh, general idea that we have with Lily is, if you look at this very broad <laughs> image, uh, a very broad image on what, what, what we are doing at the moment. We have organizations which are pushing information about their products and their services to the community, a community of potential customers. Uh, and they're going to do a lot of that through like broadcast marketing. So they throw all the same product information, pro, throw all the same pricing information onto the big group of users. And then some, party, some part of that group of users will eventually produce some revenue uh, for these uh, organizations. Now, uh, what we want to do and uh, what we're working on at the moment yeah, is to make sure that uh, companies are not throwing information, but they are actually providing recommendations which are effective call to actions yeah, to uh, users in a personalized way. And we will do that by tracking how that user and those user profiles actually interact with data. 
Um, so, uh, put very simply, um, we're going to manage all the data. We store that in HBase. Uh, but we're going also to manage and store uh, all the usage metrics around that data. So every operation that the user does against a, a data record, being it reading, updating, deleting, whatever, uh, on a low level, we're going to preserve that next to the data. Uh, how we're going to do that? Well, basically, that's very easy because HBase is there. And HBase allows for this kind of storage. Uh, HBase specifically allows for that kind of usage. So uh, we took uh, HBase as a foundation there. Now, uh, having uh, measured, uh, uh, having locked uh, all that uh, usage data, it is already to provide very simple, uh, very quite easy to provide simple recommendations. Uh, after all, the most popular records are probably also the kind of records that you want to recommend to a new user because, well, they are the most popular already. Uh, but if you start grouping that information, if you tr start combining that information, then you can make a really uh, specific and almost personal, uh, personalized recommendations in a fairly easy way. We'll also allow people to add domain knowledge to that equation. If you have a large corpus of, for instance, patent data, which is fairly structured, but you can supply that set of patent data with names of companies, uh, with names of uh, uh, researchers or inve investors, and increase or augment the quality of that data using that, those word lists, basically, you can keep those into account. We're going to provide a, a processing framework around that, and basically we'll be able to show uh, relationships or links uh, between data items um, uh, that uh, were inferred by two means. First of all, how data is being used, and second, because you had the ability to add some domain knowledge to that. And that can be used very broadly. It could be marketing, advertising, uh, could be also uh, content recommendations, obviously, and so on. Now, we're currently building the system. Uh, we're at the stage where we have a 1.0.1 release, uh, which is the highly scalable data repository which allows you to store, index, and search the information. You're going to store the information in HBase, and you're going to search it uh, through Solar, so we build a bridge in between. Um, what we're working on at the moment is to make sure that we gather all, in real time, use its uh, statistics, uh, so operations around these data items, to provide these uh, as an analytic service. And then later on, and that's something that I'll hopefully be able to confirm and uh, announce uh, that it's available uh, at the Berlin Buzzwords of next year, uh, have also uh, the recommendations uh, in place. It's all based on, well, HBase and Solar, which is technology we chose after a lengthy evaluation and lots of thoughts. That was a, a very early days for all of the NoSQL tools and uh, big data tools at that time. Uh, we're very happy with that choice because it gets reconfirmed as being a good uh, solid engine to build under these applications uh, for uh, multiple times already. It's being used at Facebook, Twitter, this guy's from Facebook. This guys from StumbleUpon here as well, uh, which going to present on HBase as well. Uh, the point of HBase is uh, very specifically that it does a lot of stuff automatically. You don't need, you don't have the, you have the real auto partitioning stuff, which uh, is uh, something we don't want to uh, spend a lot of time on. Uh, and that's uh, built in and comes out uh, automatically out of the box uh, with HBase. Now, how is uh, Lily structured? Uh, it's quite simply, ac simple, actually. So uh, basically, in, in Lily, you're going to store uh, records, and records consist of a set of fields, and these fields have a value, and those values uh, must uh, abide some type. Huh? Now, and that's where the, the fun thing st uh, starts. HBase and a lot of the other systems out there uh, don't do a lot of typing, and don't have a schema language. Uh, they sell it as a, a feature, well, while as if you start building enterprise applications, you don't mind schemas too much because it's a contract for application developers uh, and it makes it easy uh, to, to work uh, with systems. Uh, it makes it easy to validate your information as well. So we add a schema layer on top of uh, HBase, which is the Lily schema model. Uh, and we provide a number of, uh, let's say, the usual 
value types in there, uh, strings, longs, integers, but also fancy ones like blobs. So you can store uh, blob information, uh, PDFs, images, video if you want, uh, but uh, also uh, links. Huh? So you can use those links basically to model relationships between records which are stored in Lily, which are stored in HBase. Huh? So we're all back to the usual relation, well, relational database or at least uh, enterprise database uh, concepts again. Um, how does this schema look like? Uh, we uh, manage those uh, both, well, you can uh, manipulate the schema through a Java API, uh, which I'll be showing in the demo, uh, but uh, there's also a JSON representation. Everybody who has been working and playing with IT for a while is acutely aware of this kind of schema languages. So you have a definition of the field types, you have a definition of the record types. In the, record, in the definition of the record types, you're going to use field type definitions. And, well, uh, we basically offer the same kind of stuff which SGML DTDs did at that time as well. So it's the kind of uh, well, easy to use uh, mechanisms uh, to uh, define a schema and then also obviously to create and access uh, data uh, along uh, that schema in uh, Lily. How does it look like in terms of uh, deployments? Well, uh, the deployment uh, happens on uh, what we say the usual uh, interesting uh, and sophisticated, if not uh, complicated, uh, uh, Hadoop uh, HBase uh, setup. So we need all kinds of like services. Uh, this is getting interesting. <laughs> um, uh, we get the Zookeeper, uh, uh, which is used for general process coordination. Uh, but we have HBase running on, t on top of uh, the Hadoop file system. Uh, we have Solar, um, and we have a, 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 a small and efficient uh, Java uh, server application in front of that, which represents the Lily node, uh, to which you're going to connect uh, using uh, your client. Your client being either a Java application application or uh, uh, some other application which uh, the Java application can use a Java API, the other applications can use uh, a REST API which is uh, using HTTP and JSON. So uh, from any kind of developing, a developing platform, development platform, you can easily access uh, data uh, stored and, and well, store data uh, in, in Lily as well. Uh, so typically you will have uh, a cluster set up with a number of physical nodes. This is for instance one node, the, the light blue one, which has a combination of solar uh, Hadoop dot, uh, HTFS da data node, uh, an HBase data node, uh, and a Lily uh, server application uh, running on a single box, and you have multiple boxes of that, uh, so that you can scale out uh, easily. I have a, a rather interesting and pretty complete architectural <laughs> diagram of Lily as well. I'm not going to bore you with all of the details. It's actually on the, the Lily documentation website. Um, just the big blocks, so you have HBase in the middle. So all content which is stored in HBase, uh, which is stored in Lily, ends up in HBase. Uh, and we can tell you lots of, uh, lots of stories about how we do that. <laughs> um, but uh, obviously we're also going to maintain indexes in Solar. Uh, so we need some kind of like bridge between HBase and Solar. Uh, um, and uh, we wanted that bridge to be reliable. Uh, reliable in the sense that if HBase is a distributed system and Lily pretends to be a distributed system as well, that means that all of the components inside Lily need to be distributable as well. So we had to build some kind of like uh, message passing uh, mechanism uh, running alongside HBase, uh, which allows us to feed an indexer application, which then eventually does the mapping of a Lily record into a Solar uh, record, uh, fairly efficient but also robust. So if one of the server nodes fails, that uh, you don't have the situation where your Solar index is inconsistent with your HBase uh, content or your Lily content. And for that, uh, we built the Rolog, which is like a message queue, but it's not in message queue. It's basically a communication uh, system uh, between uh, HBase and uh, outside applications or for doing uh, cross-table updates uh, inside HBase as well. Uh, these uh, libraries, 
So the indexing and the rollout library are available uh, also uh, under an open source license, all of Relief basically. Um, uh, we use it for two things. Uh, uh, we have uh, an indexing uh, mechanism, an indexing library that we can use, which is modeled uh, after the Google application engine uh, uh, secondary indexing. So basically what you're going to do, uh, you have your content, your real content table, and well, given the fact that we're using a, a big table system, you don't have secondary indexes. So you can only index your information uh, across the, the, the row key using the row key uh, or access the information using the row key. Uh, basically, if you want to access your information using a specific uh, column uh, value, then uh, basically you will have to duplicate uh, those columns uh, into a separate secondary index table, which uses uh, the value as a key uh, uh, to that data. And then you can do simple lookups uh, using uh, that secondary index to the real uh, content in your uh, record table. It's not something we invented ourselves. It's something which is uh, documented in the Google App Engine documentation. Basically, we made it available on top of HBase. So if you're using HBase and you're looking out for secondary indexing, uh, then uh, have a look at uh, the uh, indexing library that we made available already. So we're using it for that. Basically, inside Lily for link management uh, and for uh, keeping secondary indexes up to date, but we also use it for more asynchronous typed information. Uh, you have HBase running, you put some record updates inside HBase. These need to be forwarded to Solar uh, for updating a, a, a Solar record. Now, obviously, the performance of Solar and the performance of HBase is not necessarily tied to each other. So you need some system which allows you to, allows you to queue up updates which uh, must go to Solar. Uh, and there we use uh, the Rolog library as well. It's not transactionally safe. Uh, but it's consistent. Uh, so we guarantee you that if an update fails somehow, that the entire thing fails, and it fails in a consistent way, so you don't end up with, with, with inconsistent data afterwards, but we don't provide the rollback. If you would provide the rollback, we'd be doing relational databases, basically, or assets uh, constraints. That's what we don't do. Um, and obviously, uh, for that queuing mechanism, we use HBase as a persistent store rather than MySQL or some other uh, engine uh, out there. Looking at uh, what the indexer does, it has a number of different functions. First of all, and I show you that in my brief demo, uh, it allows you to do dereferencing or de denormalization of data. So, for instance, if you have a book record which has a link to an author and a publisher, if you want to do searches on book based on authors, uh, then you need to do some kind of denorm denormalization so that you can build an index Refer, refer, referencing books uh, using author names. Uh, that's what you can do with the indexer. Uh, you can also, uh, we have version management, we also have multilinguality in the uh, Lily content model, uh, but for the version management you can, for instance, uh, maintain uh, multiple index versions, an index of all the live versions of the records and an index of all the draft uh, uh, versions of the index. Uh, we do uh, the two main functions is uh, an incre incremental index update. So we will uh, uh, feed your solar index incrementally uh, based on uh, uh, updates on, on, on the HBase side, or we can do uh, map reduce based uh, or map based uh, uh, full uh, index rebuilds uh, using uh, the, 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 the map reduce processing framework as well. Uh, for convenience purposes, we also uh, included Apache Tika inside so that you can do uh, index, uh, you can do content extraction. So we can we offer full text indexing basically of PDFs and Word and the, the, the usual uh, Office formats there. And there's a sharding configuration as well so that you can feed uh, a sharded uh, configuration of Solar, a sharded setup of Solar uh, from inside Lily. Uh, looking at the status, where we are right now, 
uh, we released uh, Lily 1.0.1 uh, in May, so uh, we've been working on it since 2009. We have a bunch of customers. We have a first contribution as well, uh, Frogpond, which is uh, some uh, tool which uses uh, annotations on Java classes to easily generate mappings between a Java environment and Lily. So that's cool, uh, having first contributions already. Um, and then very briefly on what we're going to work on, uh, usage statistics, basically on a conceptual level, they will sit in the, the, the create, read and update part. Uh, the idea is that we're going to track all the user operations against records uh, from both perspectives. So you'll be able to look at a record and say who, what, what, what has been done by what user with this record, also from, uh, the, uh, also from the other direction. Um, and the idea is to uh, automatically build user profiles, which will be stored as Lily records as well, obviously, uh, which we will tie to record operations and provide indexed access as well. So we're going to uh, build a, 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 a feature providing a more generic secondary indexing on top of uh, HBase uh, as well. The idea is also to keep in mind the time dimension so that we can detect trends, uh, popularity of records, uh, changes in the user population that we will be able to extract these uh, trends uh, as well. That will allow us to go to recommendations because if you group your users based on shared properties, if you group your users based on uh, how they access records, um, and if you do the same with records, you're going to group them based on the fact that they share some properties or that they share some user operations, you can build connections between users and sets of users and records or uh, sets of records. And basically that's what uh, recommendations uh, is about. For full-on recommendations, the real recommendations, we are looking currently at some real-time capable MAUT algorithms. Uh, but the idea is to pre-index and to pre-calculate as much as possible, because if you want to do that uh, currently, uh, you will need to use it in a batch-oriented way, which is not so interesting. We want to be as fast as possible or as real-time as, as possible. Um, and also, we want, to people, we want uh, users uh, to contribute uh, domain knowledge uh, to that uh, recommendation calculation uh, pipeline. But that's, uh, I think, something uh, we'll be talking on about next year. Uh, currently, we're focusing for uh, the next release of Lily, uh, which is specializing on keeping track of usage statistics uh, for uh, late October of uh, uh, this year. Um, the usage statistics and some analytics around that will be for the end of the year. And then we'll start working in 2012 on recommendations uh, and further on. Uh, how we're going to pay for all that, because all of what I've been mentioning so far is available for free from uh, the project website, is through uh, the availability of uh, an enterprise uh, version of Lily, which adds some tools to make it easy to install and to manage uh, Lily deployments and clusters, which also has a, an admin uh, UI and uh, obviously comes with uh, the required level of enterprise support. I'm uh, 10 minutes away from where I am, so that leaves me five minutes for a demo. That's uh, more than I uh, was hoping for. Uh, are there any uh, things that I missed out uh, so far? Or I just head down to the demo. Somebody here. Can you tell us uh, how do you manage solar shards? Uh, do you use uh, solar clouds? Uh, we, don't, we don't use solar uh, cloud because it's uh, not generally available. It's uh, something which uh, well, is not easily released uh, so far. You have to. This is integrated in Solar Trunk. Right? Uh, is it? Well, yeah, but it's not like released uh, as a. Is it released at the moment? Uh, well, there is no uh, four points. X release yet, uh, so it's on trunk, but it's integrated with, with it, uh, solar yeah, trunk. Yeah, we haven't looked at the integration yet because we're waiting until Lucid does a formal release with everything combined. <laughs> uh, we, uh, for the record, we rely on Cloudera, uh, so the Cloudera distribution for Hadoop. Uh, we're working with Cloudera as well, um, and uh, there will be integrated offers uh, from Cloudera and Autotot at some point there. Um, 
and we obviously hope to share this. The, the, uh, we hope to share the same pleasure with uh, with Lucid. Um, on to the demo. Uh, this is very. It's, it's a quick demo. It's nothing too special about it. Uh, the idea is that we're going to. Uh, um, import some um, mailbox mailing list archives into uh, Lily. So, uh, and the schema looks like this. It's very, very sophisticated. You have uh, email messages, and those have uh, uh, parts, MIME parts, MIME, uh, uh, MIME type parts. Um, messages have a number of fields. They have a to, a from, uh, a parts field, which is a link field, because a message can consist of multiple parts. Huh? So there's a link field uh, between a message and part. List ID, subject, and sender. Um, and then you have parts. Uh, parts being uh, consist of a field content, media type, and message. Now, the interesting thing in terms of searching through the content is that you want to find messages but if you do full text searches, the content of the message you're searching on, the full text rep representation of the message is stored with the parts and not so much with the message. So we'll have to do some uh, dereferencing uh, in between. Um, and now I'm heading into the, the first issue of my demo. It says I'm missing my top bar <laughs> and I can't switch. Oh, hold on. Okay, makes it easier for me. So, um, uh, at first what we have to do is to check, uh, I have basically on my laptop, I have a uh, little uh, VMware uh, image uh, with uh, Lily uh, pre-installed, which we have been using the uh, Lily Enterprise packages for, so the, the YUM and, and Debian uh, packages. Uh, and um, so everybody who has been playing around with HBase and Hadoop knows the GPS command, uh, command because it's one of the, <laughs> the, the ones you, most, you use most often. Uh, and it shows us that uh, nothing is running at the moment. So I'll uh, start everything. This is like kind of tricky. Nope, so I haven't been able to check before what that it was working before. Basically what it does, it's going to start off the uh, Hadoop name node, secondary name node, uh, the data node, uh, the job tracker. So for people who have been using uh, Hadoop already fairly familiar. Uh, now obviously it's doing that on a single node, but it would do the same if I would be running it on a cluster of 10 nodes or 20 nodes. It just goes off and makes sure that all the services are started on uh, the uh, correct uh, server. Um, to verify that it works, and uh, I'll have to uh, give it maybe half a minute. It depends a bit. I'll check here on my CPU bar, which you can't see if it has uh, loaded up all the services. Uh, let's have a look at uh, not the video anymore. We've seen that already. Uh, let's have a look at our uh, configure at our uh, Lily admin application. Uh, so basically, what we see here is our cluster, but our cluster only consists of a single node, and uh, it gives you uh, some health indicator of uh, if all the services are running well. Um, let's check, for instance, if HBase is running well. Apparently, it does so. And if we normally, well, we can check. We can connect to the HBase master from here. Um, so uh, we should be good to go. Now, if we look at the schema, well, we've just started up an empty uh, instance of Lily, so there's nothing in there yet, and no record types or field types. So what I'm going to do is to run a little application which I have still here, which is a, a little Java application. It's just one a single class, basically. It's not, not a lot of code, which basically creates the uh, schema in Java, but you could use uh, the REST interface and, and JSON for that as well. So it goes off, it connects to uh, Zookeeper. So all the Lily clients will look up on Zookeeper whether uh, the, uh, where the, the actual uh, data uh, nodes are residing, uh, and it will create uh, the field types there. So all the communication be between clients and, um, 
uh, servers is, is stateless as well. Yeah. Uh, so now, if all goes well, we should be able to look at the uh, schema again, and it's, we see that we have the schema created, we have messages, we have parts, we have the field types there, so that's uh, cool already. Now, there's another function uh, of the little application. What it basically does is it takes an mbox file, so it's a standard mailbox uh, uh, file, uh, mailbox archive file, and it uh, analyzes it, is, it extracts all the messages from it, and it will uh, put those into uh, Lily. Uh, let's see which one we're going to use. We're going to use uh, the, that's a bit small perhaps, yeah. uh, I can't make it much larger, yeah. So we're going to use, uh, so this is an Mbox uh, gzip version 2010, uh, the month of October. So it will connect again to Zookeeper, find out where the Lily nodes are, and it will now uh, process uh, the uh, the uh, information uh, inside the file and create mes messages out of that and, and store those into uh, Lily. Now, for the people who have been listening carefully so far, we, the only thing we've done so far is put information into HBase. Yeah? Um, let's check on that. We've created 530 messages, or at least parts has been created, which typically will translate here to a message. Um, uh, for that, I'm using uh, the little uh, Twig Kit application. If you want to build solar applications, so uh, we've been talking with the guys from Twig Kit. They have a GSP uh, template library, which is fairly easy to use. I, I haven't worked with it, and I got it running in, in half an hour, and I'm not a developer, so <laughs> can you imagine? Uh, basically, it allows you to build uh, interfaces, search interfaces using solar. Um, the uh, problem is obviously that we've loaded now some messages inside Lily, but they haven't been indexed into Solar uh, yet. Uh, for that, we have to create an index in Lily. So there's a command for that. There's not a user interface for that yet, but it's uh, something we are planning for. Now, uh, just to show you what we have in terms of indexes, we have no indexes defined yet. Let's add that index. So basically what it does, it's going to take an indexer configuration and it will tell you, store the information uh, in that index into that specific, uh, this is the sharding configuration that you need to use. Uh, so it just creates that. It's basically a configuration that it creates and it also uh, fires up and powers up, configures the row lock. So now the row lock is aware of the fact that an index uh, consists. Now we have an issue though so even though the uh, index is uh, active, well, the index is available um, and active, yeah? uh, we already have a bunch of information inside Lily, which is not indexed in Solar yet. Yeah? So how are we going to index that? Well, basically using a MapReduce job, we're just going to uh, tell, to ask for a, a batch rebuild. Yeah? So now um, it's working. If you would see uh, my uh, CPU meter on my toolbar, you'll see that it's working. But we can verify that it works as well uh, in the search interface because if I hit a refresh there, so you see the we have 499, 4, 532. Uh, so you have these messages flowing in. We have the auto commit feature set for solar so that it's uh, every two seconds, which is much too fast to, for a built or high scale infra environment, but for a demo, it's nice. Uh, it automatically builds uh, the, uh, the facet browsing on top of that as well. Um, so uh, we now have uh, uh, set up that index and filled it with some initial data. And now what we can do uh, is import some more files. So let's check with the uh, Lily user interface. 
you see that the uh, batch build has run, uh, that it has succeeded, so all the messages have been correctly imported. But uh, for now, when we insert new content of the same type into Lily, it will automatically analyze the content, find out that it are new mail messages, and automatically add those to the solar index as well. So from now on, you have automatic uh, index uh, maintenance uh, uh, going uh, together with uh, new information being added to uh, Lily. So it's a bit slower now because it's doing the two things uh, at the time. But if, you, if I hit refresh in my browser, you see 640, 663. So there's new stuff being fed into uh, the solar index. And at the same time, it's all available uh, from uh, Lily as well. Let's just finish off with a demo, uh, first of all, that the there's some, if I type my own name in, vanity search, so you see that I've sent some uh, messages to the HBase user list because that's the, um, the uh, mail archive that I'm, uh, been, uh, which I've been working through at the moment. Um, now, uh, the links here don't go to like a message representation, otherwise we'd be actually be building, I don't know, there's a lot of applications which do mail archive uh, serving already. Uh, this goes directly to the REST interface. So you see the same record here being represented uh, under the Lily REST interface. Uh, we have a message uh, which consists of fields to from list ID and parts. And that link field here, which goes to a part, I can use that, the ID, and link through to that. And that's basically how the parts are stored. Now here, obviously, it's uh, encoded. You can't read it anymore. But it's the same stuff which got fed into the solar index as well. So um, everything is uh, working uh, fine. Um, that was uh, basically it in terms of uh, demo. If you have further interest in Lily, want to play around with it, uh, lilyproject.org. We're there to answer your questions. Uh, and I'm thank. Uh, thanks for having me, and uh, if you have any questions, please don't uh, hesitate uh, to ask them now or to, or to step forward after uh, the presentation. Thank you very much.